Today, using Apple Motion, I'm gonna show you how to create a map animation like Lord of the Rings. Also, if you're a patron, you'll be able to download this project file and change out the map for whatever you like so you can apply it to your videos. Once you've downloaded the map, go ahead and open up Apple Motion. From there, we're gonna select the Motion Project. On the right side, I'm gonna leave it at 1080p and I'm gonna change the frame rate over to 2398 to closely match how Lord of the Rings looks. From there, you can leave your duration at whatever you like. I recommend you set it pretty long so you have a lot of time to work with these map animations. So I'm gonna leave it at 30 seconds and push open. From here, go ahead and push Command I. That's going to bring up the import window and bring in the map. Now it's gonna be important that this map is a really high resolution for this effect to work well. So for example, this map is 3200 by 2400. So if you can get anything that's around that resolution or higher, you're gonna be really well set up. So now that we have this map in here, I'm actually gonna go ahead and rename it to map. Then we're gonna go up and click on add object and add a 3D camera. From here, it's gonna ask if we wanna switch everything over to 2D or 3D. We're gonna switch everything over to 3D. So the first thing I wanna do is actually split up our view. To do that, come to the top right and click on this icon and then we'll just split it into two. So right now, as it is, we can see our active camera here on the left side and then on the right side is a look from the right hand side of everything. You can see that as I click and move this camera around, it's actually moving it around in our active camera box. You'll also note that whatever window I select becomes the active window and it has this yellow outline. That's important because if we try and play our animation with our active camera not selected, then the animations won't come through. So we have to make sure that it is selected to see our animations. I'm gonna actually change our view on the right side from the right over to perspective. So this is actually gonna allow us to see both our camera and the map in 3D space. From here, we need to tell the camera where to go. Now we could animate that by hand, but there's a really easy way. With our camera selected, go up to behaviors, go to camera and select framing. Now that we have our framing set up, we need to go down here and select a rectangle. Now go ahead and just click and drag wherever you want this rectangle to zoom in. So for example, let's say I want it to go up here to the top left to where the shire should be. And now what we can do is go into the shape settings and disable the outline. Then we can drop the fill opacity just so it's barely visible. We could also change it to something like red so you get some nice contrast going on. But from there, let's rename this rectangle to be position one. Then with our framing selected, we can click and drag the position box into this well. And what that's going to do is it's going to auto animate the camera to fill up that space. So if I select the active camera so it plays through, we can see how the camera is actually animating over to zoom in onto that rectangle. But you might notice a slight problem. You'll see how it's kind of wobbling a little bit. And that is a very easy fix. We'll go into our framing settings and we're gonna find the orientation option. Change it from orient to current over to orient to final. And that is going to totally resolve that issue. So we can see now that this camera is animating into its proper position. What's great is we can actually go through, we'll go to the end of the animation, select our position, and anywhere we move this position is where our camera will end up. So if we wanna end up zooming in on the realm of Middle Earth text there, we could also move it in Z space to really zoom in. There's a few settings I wanna change though to really make this look smooth. Going into our framing options, you'll see that there is the position transition. So right now the transition is going to finish right at halfway through the project. Let's go ahead and set that to a full 100%. Also, there's the rotation transition. Let's go ahead and set that to a full 100%. Then there's the transition, which is set to constant. So if I shorten this framing down, it's actually going to animate much faster. And you'll see how jarring this animation is. It's going to come to a complete stop just very suddenly. We want a nice ease animation. Again, with that framing selected, let's change the transition from constant over to ease both. We can also drag up our ease out curve. So now we should have a nice smooth animation in onto that text. So we have our first camera position set up. But if you watch The Lord of the Rings, you'll notice that it's going through lots and lots of different locations. And that is why this framing camera setup is so nice. Go ahead and select your position and we'll push Command D to duplicate it. From there, we can actually move this to wherever we want to move the camera. Let's say I wanna go up to the Shire here at the top left. We can rename this position to position two. Then we can go into the framing and duplicate that with Command D and we'll just call this framing two. Now all we need to do is drag position two into this well 
and the camera will auto animate to that position. If we drag our framing to over further in the timeline, you can see now that the camera will animate from its first position here in the bottom left up to the top left there and it does it all for me. If we want these to overlap a little bit so the animation's even that much smoother, we can drag these out and I'll drag the framing two out just like so. So now it's going to zoom in on Middle Earth and then it's going to move upward to the top. So we could actually disable the view of these so we don't get that red tint. And now we can keep adding positions on the camera. But one other thing we can do is if we really want this camera to look 3D, we could select our position two, go into the properties and find the rotation settings. I'm gonna rotate this on the X axis and you'll see how that's giving us this 3D dimension because the camera is actually rotating to fit that object. Then we can go ahead and move it down in Z space so that we still have that 3D look, but we're not getting that black background behind it. So now the camera will actually zoom down and then it'll move in 3D space and get that nice 3D look to it. Let's go ahead and move on down into Mordor. What we're gonna do is push Command D on our position. We can go ahead and rename that to position three. Then we can select our framing two, duplicate that with Command D and select framing three. Now all we need to do is move our position to where we want it in the camera. So I'll go ahead and drag that on down into Mordor, just like so. Then what we can do is go into framing three and drag position three as the final. And we could slide this over in our timeline. And let's go ahead and actually drag these out so the movement's even slower. So we'll go ahead and zoom in on the text here. We'll fly on up to the Shire here and then we'll slowly move down to Mordor. Now what's amazing about this method is again, we can go in and say, oh, we're not quite in the position I wanna be in. So we'll just click and drag the final position to wherever we like, just like so. And if we wanted that angle to be even more severe, we could go into our properties and drag up our rotation that much more. So one last thing you could do is in your camera settings, go to camera. We can actually go to the depth of field options, click show, and we could enable depth of field. Now, you're not gonna see it just yet, but if you go to the top right to render settings, we can change and activate depth of field. And now you'll see part of the camera is actually blurred out and we can set how much blur it has. Now, currently it's blurring the wrong portion of the video. So we need to actually change where our focus offset is. So I'll just go ahead and click and drag. It's gonna only go to a negative 1000. If you need it to go further, just click directly on the numbers and drag that down. So now we've got this depth of field going on Mordor. So what you would need to do is throughout your video, click on the keyframes here and add keyframes for the different positions you wanna be focused on. So for example, right here, I wanna focus on the text. We'll go ahead and animate that up. And then as we move down into the map, I want it to zoom in closer here. So I'll just set the focus offset to closer to the camera and then it'll zoom in and focus on Mordor. So now we've got this really great looking depth of field throughout our entire scene. Again, the project file for this is gonna be up on my Patreon so you can add in whatever image of whatever map you want to recreate this effect. Thank you so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.